Hey guys, another week of Come Follow Me. <laughs> uh, we're in the second week of Acts, so this is Acts 6 through 9. Um, and there's some interesting things happen in here, and I'm certainly not covering all of it, so please do your reading. Uh, but basically this is about, well, the theme seems to be that the Come Follow Me manual hints at as well, that being available to do what the Holy Ghost would ask you to do. So it's starting your day with, you know, what do you want me to do today, Lord? And then listening for those promptings of, and then going to do whatever that is. Incidentally, today I have some things I need to drop off for um, some lovely folks from Papua New Guinea who are absolutely freezing here in the New Zealand winter. Uh, and as we have an abundance of warm clothing that we don't necessarily use all of, we can certainly spare a couple of jackets. So I'm going to drop those off. Um, that was one thing that just came up yesterday. Some simple things I can do. And it also got me thinking too, and we'll look at Acts 6.3, so we'll go straight into that because that's what we're going to start off with. Um, it's like, do I have these characteristics? And do I have friends with these characteristics? What am I looking for in surrounding myself with? Even if they're not particularly Christian people um, or, or any denomination of any sort, like uh, are they people that have like the values that you desire in your life? Um, have a look at that. So let's... I know, that's sort of the theme is sort of like, hey, I'm available, I can help you out. Um, and I'll tell you a little story around one of the friends I have. I just thought of, like, while I was talking about this, um, just going over it before I started recording. But let's look at chapter 6, verse 3 first, and then we'll talk about that. So, it's, what happens is, because there's just so many people in the last week, there was, you know, 3,000 at one point baptized, and there was thousands over here, and, that, and the more they went out preaching, that Peter and James especially, uh, Peter and... John especially, sorry, uh, I'm sure James was somewhere in the mix, um, remember he wrote lots of stuff too, so that was really cool, we'll get to that later, his book is amazing, um, but yeah, there's just different things that are in there, so um, a lot of things that were happening amongst the church, and it suddenly became this, you know, how you get this, you know, you get the ball rolling as you say, and there's so much going on, it's like we need more people to help. And, and we don't quite know how to do that, so we're going to look at, okay, well, we're all here. All of you look around and, and find some people with these values, and then we'll all, like, pray about it, and, and we'll appoint them to be, um, like, helpers, if you will, or um, overseers kind of thing. And today we would refer to these as 70s in our church structure. That's what they are. They support the leadership but they go about doing a lot of the work and a lot of the visiting and the reporting back um, because that's what you need, right? You know, this is before all social media and internet, so you literally needed someone to go there, look at it, write it down and come back again. So that's what they needed. Um, and just someone that, like, other people could go and see for, you know, these kind of things, people that had, like, this kind of spirit. So let's have a read. It says, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom you may appoint over this business. And there's other characteristics you can put under those sort of things. Like when they say wisdom, people just think, oh, they know a lot. And it's also trust. Because if someone is wise, then they're also trustworthy, right? Does that make sense? Because it does to me. Um, and that if, if they have true wisdom and they are a wise person, then they are someone you could trust because they know what that means. If they're really wise, and, and I don't mean so much just full of information, um, but they know how to deal with people, they know how to read situations, they've got a lot of experience and they're very kind. Um, so there's a lot of things you can go in there. Honest, good report, praiseworthy, wise. Sound familiar? Sounds like the article of faith number 13. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Um... And they said, and they'll give yourselves to the prayer continuum, that's in verse 4, and they choose, in verse 5, they choose uh, Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmen, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. So there's seven of them chosen there. Now we really only hear of Stephen and Philip, Stephen met a terrible demise, unfortunately, and so did Philip in the end. We don't really hear a lot more about the others, although that doesn't mean to say that they didn't do great stuff either. It's just that we don't have an account in the scriptures of that. So, looking at this, do I have those kind of characteristics? Because these men were chosen to help the leadership. Do I have those kind of characteristics? And am I looking for those kind of things in my friends around me? That, that honesty, that wisdom, that trust. Are you looking for those things? A man of faith, people of faith of, as I said, even if it's not Christian faith, have they got 
like a, a value-based system on, on which they hold themselves accountable. It's really cool. Uh, so my little story that I said earlier I'd share. So I had a, this is earlier last year. Um, I don't know, sometime last year. Anyway, so my friend messaged me and she's younger. I could be her mother, but she's just my friend, right? So she messages me and she's like, oh, I need your help with something. Um, are you available Thursday? And I'm like, yeah, totally. What time? She's like, oh, about four o'clock. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll be fine. No problem. And then it, like about an hour went by and I'm like, I don't even know what she needs help with. I just totally volunteered to help her. I mean, like, <laughs> you'd think maybe she was asking, oh, I'm going to go murder someone. I need you to be my witness that I wasn't doing it or, you know, like whatever. But she is the kind of friend that would never ask me to do anything that wasn't in keeping with my values. Um, she is the kind of friend that is kind and trustworthy and honest. Um, so I, I just knew that in agreeing to help her, that it would be nothing negative and it would be totally something that um, she valued my opinion on. And like it, I could just trust that. And I'm like, I'm thinking when I'm writing this, I was thinking too, like you need those kind of friends in your life. Um, so, you know, hey, Geordie, if you ever see this. Um, but yeah, so it was it was just a really sweet thing. And, and then I asked her like, what is it you need help with? And she's told me and I was like, oh yeah, I can totally do that. It's no problem at all. But again, I, I knew that Immediately when she said, oh, I need your help with something, it was not going to be something that would be anything against where I hold my values or to go against anything that was, you know, going to be bad as such, and broad spectrum bad. It was a really good thing, and of course I'll help her. Um, so, needing to expand the organization of Christ Church, some helpers we would now refer to as 70s are called. Interesting that there's seven of them. I don't know if there's any correlation with that. Um, so look, what characteristics they look for. Have a look for that. What are they looking for? What else would you add to this list? What else would you add? Um, drop in the comments. I want to know. What else would you add to the list of attributes that you would look for in someone like this? And do you have these same attributes? Are you striving for them? And note that things like without flaw, handsome, rich, smart, clever, popular, and other outward appearance traits are not mentioned nor required. The Lord looks for willingness, availability, honesty, effort, and trustworthiness. He looks on the heart. And that's what it's about this week when he's saying, you know, I need someone to help. And those that are those kind of people are the ones that when someone like that says, I need some help, you put your hand up before they even finish the sentence about what the help is about to say, yeah, I'm here, I'm available. Um... And like, you know, you need those kind of friends. Like often when our bishops will say, oh, I need some help with something, they'll be like, mm, go on. You know, like <laughs> waiting for it. And you're like, yeah, I don't know, you know. But I would really pray and hope that we would be the kind of people that if Christ was there and he was saying to us, especially through the Holy Ghost, I need you to help this person. Before you even know what that would be, you would say, yes, of course I will. Because you know he's not going to ask you to do something that's contrary to anything that you hold dear to you. He's not going to ask you to do something that's going to lead to a bad place. Um, you know, you trust in that relationship, just like I did with my friend and the help that she needed. So, do you have those kind of characteristics? Are you looking for friends that have the same values? Are you in the same place as wanting, like, if you want those things in your life, you need to surround yourself with people who have those things, and then they will become part of your life, it's really quite beautiful, but yeah, I really did want to point out too, that a lot of the things that the world would tell us, um, is going to make you a good leader, it's not what Christ looks for, so keep that in mind too, it's really cool, all right, a little short one there, but uh, hang around, we're going to go over to Acts chapter 7, I'll see you there.